Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. I really appreciate all the subscriptions. Please hit that subscribe button right below and also hit that notification button. This is so you guys know that every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we release another episode of Medicine Deconstructed. As we've discussed many times before, we've talked about coronavirus. Today, as we move into the winter months, it's now August, moving into September, we're gonna have to be able to differentiate between coronavirus and influenza virus. This is going to be something that needs to take place coming up very, very quickly. Today, we're gonna discuss the differences between the two viruses, clinically what you're gonna see, complication-wise what you're gonna see, and the difference between children and adults. Stay tuned for more information. Let's go over some basic stats. When you look at the number of infections worldwide of influenza, we're talking about a billion infections worldwide with probably around 500,000 deaths annually when you look at influenza. When we look at SARS-CoV-2 specifically, not coronavirus in general, but SARS-CoV-2, we have over 25 million infections with about 800,000 deaths worldwide. So you can see right now we have less infections with a greater amount of death. This is not to scare you, these are just Stats. When you look at both coronavirus and influenza, they're both RNA viruses. Influenza is a negative sense. Coronavirus is a positive sense RNA virus. And they both have eight segments of genome. But coronavirus is a bigger set of genome. It has more kilobases than influenza. In fact, coronavirus is one of the largest viruses in terms of the amount of genome within its cell. When you look at the structure of coronavirus, it's important to pay attention to certain proteins. Let's look at the structure of coronavirus specifically. So when you look at coronavirus, they have membranous protein, they have spike protein, they have nucleocapsid protein, and they also have the envelope protein. Now, the spike protein is the major protein that binds to the airway epithelial cell or the alveolar type two cell in the lung. Once it binds to that cell, it uses one of our enzyme to cleave the spike proteins into two parts, fuse with our cell membrane and enter our body. When you look at influenza, influenza virus has the hemagglutinin protein, the neuraminidase proteins and other types of polymerases the hemagglutinin protein. It also fuses with our membrane, very similar to what coronavirus does, right? Because the virus's point is to survive. It wants to enter our cells and use our machinery to replicate itself. Coronavirus, the incubation period. So the time that you get infected to the time that you demonstrate symptoms of the infection is anywhere from five to 14 days. So we're talking up to two weeks before you demonstrate symptoms of infection. When you look at influenza, the incubation period is one to three days. So when you get infected by flu, you're gonna get the flu within 24 hours, right? And those symptoms are gonna include coughing, runny nose, fever, shortness of breath even. And so when you have the symptoms, it's very tough to differentiate between coronavirus and influenza. I really think it's important for you to know who you've been with, who are your contacts over the last several days? Because if somebody had SARS-CoV-2 that you were in contact with, could be SARS-CoV-2. If somebody had influenza, it could be influenza. So it's gonna be our job from a healthcare perspective to run the certain tests, to run the respiratory viral panels to understand, is this coronavirus or is this influenza? Now, when you look at coronavirus and influenza, we have to understand that these are merely pathogens. Now, the way the immune system works is it's gonna recognize the spike protein or the hemagglutinin protein. And from that point on, it's going to attack wherever the virus is present. Now, there are other types of pathogens that live in the environment like bacteria and like fungi. But what makes a pathogen 
virulent. And by virulent, I mean what makes the disease severe is the immune response. So a lot of the patients that I treat have autoimmune lung disease. And so when they have autoimmune lung disease, I keep them on medicines to keep their immune system from activating. That way their immune system is calmed down and they can live a symptom-free life. When they get SARS-CoV-2, or even when they get influenza, they're asymptomatic because they don't have the ability to generate symptoms. But it becomes difficult because the virus can continue to grow. And so you have to pull them off of these medicines. And what happens when you pull them off is their immune system starts to activate again. It's almost like an immune reconstitution syndrome. And then you have to deal with those consequences. So the immune system is what causes illness. And I think it's important to understand that concept, right? When you understand that the immune system's response to a pathogen's presence is what causes disease, then you begin to understand immunology. And that's very important in this case. Now, if your immune system is used to seeing a certain virus or a certain type of virus, that means it knows how to deal with it. It knows where to attack the virus. So when you think about influenza, for instance, influenza is a virus that we may see every single year. So our immune system is a lot more used to seeing influenza and has adapted to be able to deal with it. And so at times it may not overreact. When you look at influenza in children, it is known that children have many more complications than adults with influenza. Influenza in children can lead to severe complications of respiratory failure. You're gonna get more complications of respiratory failure in children that have influenza when compared to children that have coronavirus. They're also twice as likely to be infected when you compare them to adults that are over the age of 65. When you look at coronavirus in children, you're gonna get this multi-inflammatory syndrome, right? That's secondary to the presence of SARS-CoV-2. It's really a minority percentage of children that display symptoms of infection, right? So the question becomes, why is that? Well, the answer probably lies in that children see coronavirus a lot more than they see influenza. Again, there are seven types of coronaviruses that infect human beings, four of which are common and children and adults pass around every winter. OC43, 229E, HKU1, okay? These are examples of these respiratory coronaviruses that infect humans every single year during the winter time. We also have had two other epidemics of severe coronavirus infections, SARS-CoV-1 and MERS. We only pass around three types of influenza. That is H1N1, H2N3, and H2N2. So you might be asking the question right now, wait a second, if we only pass around three different influenza viruses, why are we getting a vaccine every year? Influenza A basically came from pigs and from birds. And somehow, from an evolutionary standpoint, was able to infect humans. There's a concept called antigenic drift. And what happens is the hemagglutinin protein, that structure that you saw on the virus, changes a little bit every single year. So as these amino acids change, so does the virus. And so almost nine months before the flu season, we take a look at the common influenza viruses that are out in the environment. And then we construct a vaccine to match those common viruses to those specific amino acids that are being showcased within the hemagglutinin protein. And this year, we're now doing quadrivalent vaccines that include both type of influenza Bs, the Yamagata, and the Victoria, and you'll have the most common influenza A's. And then that's what we disperse in the community, and that's what you're given every winter. 
So when you think about coronaviruses and you think about influenza viruses, I want you to imagine this scenario. You have a friend. Imagine your best friend and you guys are planning a night out. And you see this all black Range Rover. Your heart rate starts to go up. You get a little anxious about it, right? And you might even become a little bit scared because you, your best friend hasn't told you that they got a new car. They used to drive a Honda Civic, but now they drive an all black Range Rover. So viruses can do that. They can mask themselves, but then the person gets out of the car and they're like, oh crap, it's the same old influenza virus. But our immune system is not smart enough to open the door and go inside and look and see, oh wait a second, this is the same old virus. Our immune system gets scared, it gets anxious and it causes all this inflammation and it starts to build up and recruit different types of white blood cells to areas, white blood cells in your lung, causing you to be short of breath, maybe even white blood cells in your heart, causing chest pain, white blood cells maybe in your skin, causing a rash. It's all your immune system getting really, really anxious. And that's what leads to the severity of disease. When you look at SARS-CoV-2, the spike protein has changed the way it looks a little bit. So a few amino acids are completely different, making this virus novel. When we don't recognize the virus, our immune system gets scared, it gets anxious, and it causes all this inflammation and it starts to build up and recruit different types of white blood cells to areas. Not only does our immune system get recruited to the lung, but our coagulation system, our blood system, gets a little anxious and it starts to clot. So you get these blood clots in your lung, right? Whereas when you look at influenza, our immune system kind of recognizes influenza because it sees it every year, influenza A, and because people get vaccines. And so since our immune system recognizes it a little bit, it doesn't overreact in the way that it does under SARS-CoV-2 presence. So these are the differences between these two viruses, and you can also see the similarities in how the immune system responds. Hey guys, thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed today. I really appreciate you guys being here. I do hope that you learned the symptomatic differences between SARS-CoV-2 and the influenza virus. I think it's extremely important. Again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscription button, hit that notification button. My buddy Nick would be mad if I didn't say that. Follow us on Instagram at Dr. J Rutland or West Coast Lung. Uh, I really appreciate you being here and I'll see you next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks for joining.